History just loves to repeat itself on social media. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Swell Entertainment. And today, me and Hermes are talking about the de-influencing trend on TikTok. The original premise of the de-influencing trend is targeting overconsumption and impulse shopping because of social media. The original audio that went viral was, I am de-influencing you. I am here to de-influence you. Do not get the Ugminis. Do not get the Dyson Arab. Do not get the Charlotte Tilbury one. Do not get the Stanley Cup. Do not get Colin Hoover books. Do not get the AirPods Pro Max. If you do any of those things, a bomb is gonna explode. You do not need the Dyson Airwrap, you do not need the Stanley Cup, you do not need all this stuff, okay? That is what they're originally talking about. However, <laughs> whenever I talk about history repeating itself on social media, I'm reminded of this tweet from Chloe Gong. She's an author who wrote the These Violent Delights book. She's also written other ones, but this is the one I'm referring to. In the book, there is a pandemic and a vaccine and people who do want to take it and people who don't want to take it. The book came out in November of 2020 and a bunch of people were like, oh my gosh, she must've been really affected by the pandemic and written this super quickly. And she tweeted out, no, I wrote this in like 2018. History is just cyclical. And that's what pops into my head when I think about the D influencing trend. I don't know if you were online during the uh, beauty YouTube guru pocket of time, but do you guys remember anti hauls? Now, anti hauls have not gone away. Anti hauls are still a thing, but I remember when they were super popular on YouTube. Now, my understanding of how anti hauls really started was that they were really about uh, beauty YouTubers who talked about makeup and things like that, making videos about products that were promoted that they were not going to be buying and why, for whatever reason, whether it was because they didn't like the ingredients list, they had bought things from in a similar vein from that company before and they did not like it. The shade range was not up to snuff and so they were not going to be supporting the brand. The colors within the eyeshadow palette were the same as another palette they had released previously and they were not going to be putting their money into that. Things like that. That was my understanding of anti hauls. Here is the product, here is why I'm not going to buy it anti hauls and there would be like five, 10, whatever in a video. And then there are also anti hauls that I personally think should be called something else because they are technically hauls because you bought them, but you didn't just haul them in. You know, it's, it's like a, whatever, but they were products like I bought these, I will not be buying them again. And for whatever reason, empties, I will not be refilling things that I tried and I have zero desire to try again that I'm giving away or whatever. Things like that, okay? That's the other type of anti-haul that I saw quite a bit. And there are still plenty of people doing anti-hauls as well. Super sexy freeze frame, Amanda, here to add also that we can also talk about how a bunch of beauty gurus were deemed untrustworthy when it was revealed that they were linking products in their description box, whether they liked the products or not, and were not disclosing that these were actually affiliate links and that they were making money off of these links. And that led to a whole train of people not trusting a lot of these beauty YouTubers. The de-influencing trend, like I said, started out as a, you do not need this product. Everyone on TikTok gets so hung up on, this is the cool new thing. Everyone has a Dyson Air app. Everyone's using Olaplex. Everyone's using the Charlotte Tilbury wand thingy. I don't know what it is. I had never heard of it prior to this. The Stanley Cup, okay? And why you don't need those things. Do not go and buy them just because they're popular on TikTok. Great sentiment. I think this is great. It's the same reason I do the I Tried It So You Don't Have To series. Talking about overconsumption and impulse spending, okay? Now there is another version of this that I see also get called de-influencing, which I think is also walking a fine line to missing the point where they're de-influencing you by telling you about the product that was promoted and something else that they like more instead of that. So it's not really de-influencing, it's dupe promoting, which is fine. I do think that there is a difference between dupes, copying and ripoffs, which is what a lot of people have been promoting. Like, oh, this is the dupe on Amazon. It's a knockoff, but these de-influencing like this sucks, but this is better. You're still promoting a product. You're still encouraging people to buy something else. Whereas the true sustainable option is what do you have at home? What do you already have that you might like using? There was one that I did this in a kind of similar vein that I did think was very good, where it was, here's the product. Here's what you probably have already in your home. You don't need the Laneige lip mask. You probably have Vaseline or Aquaphor or something else in your home that'll work just fine. You know, it's the same type of thing that I think is good. It's like, look, let's, let's workshop this bestie. Let's get home. Whether these other options that you're promoting are cheaper than not is like kind of missing the point of de-influencing. Then there are also people who are like, I'm going to de-influence you. I have bought everything. Let me explain to you why they are bad. I think this is de-influencing because you're, again, it's kind of like the, I tried it so you don't have to series. I'm not, I don't consider myself a de-influencer, but I can understand why some of you may consider me a de-influencer because I do know that some of you 
do still buy the products that I say I don't like because I in the video where I'm explaining why I don't like it or I'm showing you what I did or whatever, I answered the questions that you did want answered. And so, and even though I answered those questions, you may still decide to go and buy it. Um, there are times, especially with movies, this, this happens a lot with movies where I rip into a movie and then they're like, I don't believe you. And then they go see it and they're like, wait, you're right. Which I always think is funny. My point with my eye charted, so you don't have to serious is not necessarily to de-influence you. It's to make you look deeper and ask more questions. It's trying to get you to be better informed consumers. I spend my money on things that are probably a ripoff so that you don't spend your money on things that are probably a ripoff. I don't think that's considered de-influencing. I think that's just me being annoying on the internet more than anything or an honest consumer or influencer, whatever you want to call it. There's quite a few people as well. Um, Remy Bader, I think is a good example of this. Um, someone mentioned this as well with Re well, in regards to Remy, where she would buy clothes from companies that said they had plus sizes and things like that and show how they weren't actually like good quality. They weren't good fit, things like that. They, did, they weren't actually inclusive in size. And that's not de-influencing. That's just being a good influencer or just saying like, oh yeah, hey, here's me talking about this product and being honest with you about my feelings about this. I do think that is still a form of influencing. I don't think that's in de-influencing. You could argue that what I do is still a form of influencing, but I don't consider it de-influencing because there are some of you who do still go and buy the products. The phrase de-influencing is mainly trying to get you to not jump to whipping out the card. That is mainly the point, okay? You don't need this just because everyone else has it. You don't need it just because it's trendy. For example, that's where a lot of, what's what's a product that I saw people talking about? Oh yeah, I ordered the uh, that stupid straw thing, the anti-aging straw. A video will come out about that eventually. It'll probably be a short form video. Oh yeah, this will stop you from getting lines around your mouth. Like, do you actually need that? Not really. You could just drink out of the side of the cup. You don't need to use a straw. You know, it's, it's that simple. It's not buying every single uh, product promoted to you from uh, things I bought off Amazon hauls for travel or whatever. So much of de-influencing I think is an internal thing, but now it's kind of been co-opted into this new genre of content on TikTok, not new genre, but new genre for TikTok where they're just calling it all under this umbrella of de-influencing. You could not like a product. <laughs> for example, um, anything from Kosas, uh, someone said anything from Kosas is not worth the money. Personally, I disagree. I really like their um, under eye concealer, things like that. And again, there I, I've also seen people who are like, oh, someone so said that this is not worth it. So they're just going and throwing out all this stuff. When the de-influencing trend is that you don't need 50 shades of the same blush from all these different companies just because someone so said it was good on YouTube or TikTok or the like. You know, you need one blush, you need one black dress. If you go somewhere where you think you might need a black dress, you don't need 80 pairs of sneakers. If you don't collect sneakers, you don't think you're gonna be wearing them all the time, you know? I do think there is another discussion here as well about collecting. Collecting is one thing. I have an internet collection. There are things that I hold on to that I keep because I'm a collector. That is not the same thing for most people. Most people do not have makeup collections. Most people do not collect clothing in general for fashion purposes, archival purposes, um, things like that. They wear clothing to wear them, which I think is fine, by the way. I saw a TikTok as well from someone who was talking about how uh, brands need to be watching the de-influencing trend because this is your consumer, influencer marketing is dead, people know they are being sold to by influencers, and therefore the de-influencing is the important bit. And personally, I disagree because I think the premise of influencers is that people have always known that influencers are selling them something. Where the problem is, is when people don't disclose that they are doing a sponsored post or something like that. There are times where you can tell, I think quite a few of Alex Earl's recent videos, you can tell that she is sponsored in some capacity and she has talked about how she has sponsorships and things like that. I heard $20,000 or something insane for a brand deal, which for her, I don't know. I, I don't know if that number came from her or what. I don't know with her. I do think the de-influencing trend is the logical escala escalation of the UGC creators video that I made a few weeks ago. Now, the UGC creators are user-generated content, all right? And it's content that is paid content from individuals, usually not influencers, to make positive reviews or authentic looking reviews of products. And then typically the brands will promote them themselves, but on some occasions the creators will post them themselves. Now, this is one thing. And then there's also, let's say, people who have Amazon storefronts and make a ton of money from that, constantly promoting products from Amazon that they normally would not promote because they're just hoping that you will click that link and either buy it from them and they'll get that commission or they're just hoping you'll go through their link and then anything you buy in the next 24 hours 
it'll go to them anyway. It's people promoting products without being completely authentic of whether or not they like it and people being tricked sort of into buying products that someone was paid to promote in secret in some capacity. We can also talk about Lashgate in this as well um, with Michaela. I did not talk about it because a bunch of drama channels and beauty channels were talking about it and I just had nothing else to add so I decided not to talk about it. Really quick, let me explain what happened with Lashgate. A TikTok creator, Michaela, who um, is known for having honest opinions, I would say, made a video stitching another creator for a L'Oreal mascara. And she was like, let me show you the difference between these two lashes. So one lash full covered in mascara. She was like, let me show you the difference between like two and three coats. Would start doing one coat, it looked the same, did another coat. And then she did it and then did a cut. And it basically was a, a lash strip that she had added. She had added strip lashes on. Look how long and lengthened my lashes look. You, this literally just changed my life. This looks like false light. This is how? What? <laughs> it's this L'Oreal telescopic lift. Look at the wand. Okay, so basically I'm taking the curved side and I'm going root to tip and I'm satin to coat the lashes. And then once you've done that, you flip the brush to the side and you use the hook comb to basically separate. This is one coat. Okay, I'm going to add a second. Look at the length. Do you see that? I am speechless, and I'm not sure anyone's gonna ever be able to compete with this mascara. They were like wispy lashes from a brand that she had promoted in the past. In fact, she apparently had made a video a while ago talking about how, like, this is how easy it is for people to lie to you, and basically did the same transition to show that, look, these look like this is my mascara. Oh, look, no, it's actually strip lashes. These are fake lashes. Look how easy it is to fake this. I should note that she puts the words hashtag L'Oreal Paris partner on the actual video itself. And at this time, the video itself has the paid partnership label on it. But I believe when this video first came out in January, it did not have that label on the video. I wanna explain the paid partnership label just a little bit more because I believe it's something that I can add to my videos themselves. However, there are also instances where I believe they are added to a video later for whatever reason. For example, there was one video that I saw of someone explaining how they got their hair and nails done regularly and was able to still be on a budget and they were promoting ClassPass without actually promoting ClassPass. They were just talking about their experience with ClassPass. But later I started getting that same video promoted to me as an ad with that paid partnership label attached to it. So what I think happened is ClassPass saw that video and said, hey, can we pay you to promote this video? Or it was flagged by TikTok because of how she was speaking about ClassPass or the entire time she was being paid by ClassPass and that it hadn't actually been disclosed in the first place. There have also been times where I've seen insane videos being tagged pay for promotion. For one example, there was one video I saw where someone was putting like paint on their foot. That was the whole video, paid promotion tag. I couldn't even make out a solid brand in the video itself. My point with bringing this up is that this paid promotion could have been added after the fact by TikTok. It could have been added by L'Oreal themselves. It could have been added by Michaela after the fact. Framed it like it was a legitimate like promoting of this product. So two things here. One, obviously this is false advertising. She did not disclose that she had added strip lashes. She's lying about the performance of the product. Already this is deceitful. Now, if this is also a brand deal, which I think it's been determined that it was, I don't know if she's confirmed it, but if this was a brand deal, one, she it just doesn't seem like she disclosed that this was a brand deal. And that could be as simple as hashtag ad or saying this video was sponsored by blank, disclose in some capacity. The issue is the deception on both fronts, deception with the performance of the product, deception that it was a sponsored brand deal. The situation around Lashgate got a little out of hand for me, in my opinion, because though I don't think it's a good thing that she lied, I don't think anything warrants bringing Jeffree Star back from the brink, back from Montana, where is he? I don't know where he went, but I don't think anything warrants us giving him views again or looking to him as the moral authority on anything at all. I don't think, you know, these TikTok girlies maybe lying about the performance of products is enough to warrant him to come back online and into our computer screens. The amount of people were like, but he's honest. I don't care. Surely there's another creator you can find. The point with bringing this up though is that again, I think it, this is another instance of people feeling lied to in some capacity because yes, this is confirmation that someone lied. That was not how those lashes performed. She lied. Do I think she needs criminal charges like some people say? Not particularly, but she lied. We can say that she was deceitful in promoting a product and then was deceitful about the fact that she was being paid to promote the product. The de-influencing had kind of started around the time before Michaela's lashes. And then I think it just kind of 
drove that whole point home where people felt lied to. Now, does that mean that every influencer that has promoted a product is lying to you? No, it seems like we've gotten to a point now with the de-influencing trend where anyone speaking positively about a product is lying or has some form of other like alternative motive behind it. No, I can talk about products I hate all the time. I can tell you about products that I really like. I barely like my Apple Air Maxes. I kind of can't stand them. What's something I really like? Um, I really like this time timer. I did get this off of Amazon. Doesn't click. And then if I want, I can turn off the alarm or not when it goes off. I like that. There you go. You've been influenced. No one's paying me to do that. I just like using that. There are times where I see someone promoting a product from a brand that has been deemed de-influenced or something like that. And they're like, you're lying. We know you don't actually like this. And it's like, this person is actively using their Stanley cup all the time. Like they clearly really like it. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Let's talk about um, how to de-influence yourself because I do think a lot of it comes with uh, self-control and you know making better choices for yourself as an individual. This is a trick that I stole from the minimalists. Um, I am not a minimalist. I like stuff. I am a maximalist, 100%. I am the child of the divorce. I hoard things like a dragon, soft and shiny. But right now I have a goal of buying a house. So every that influences every single purchasing decision that I make at this point in time. However, there are times like around my birthday and Christmas where I just get a little too caught up in giving myself sweet little treats. Oh, this is nice. I like this. I should do this. I work hard for my money. I'm doing really well for myself. I should do this. Anytime I get like that and I just get a little too com comfortable with spending money, I deployed this money tip from a minimalist YouTuber who I don't remember who it was, but I think this is like a standard minimalism tip. I don't know. Let me know if anyone knows where this originated from, but it's the 48 hour rule. You can make it the 24 hour rule. And it's that if you see something you want, you wait 48 hours before you actually go and purchase that thing. Now, if you remember that you want it in 48 hours, or you've thought about it in the last 48 hours and you still really want it, then there you go. That is a good time to buy. You've given that time to think, oh my God, this cool thing is new and exciting. This is so fun. I want it because it's new and exciting. You get kind of past that point and you really think about, okay, do I actually want this thing? Do I actually need this thing? Can I afford this thing? Usually 48 hours is enough time for that. Personally, when I deploy this for myself, I usually bring it down to 24 hours because mainly my issue is, is that I try not to buy a uh, DoorDash. That's usually what gets me quite a bit. And so I do the 24 hours, like, oh, if I want food, I make myself wait 24 hours. That sounds stupid, but usually I have food in my fridge. That's the point. It's to use what's in my fridge. That's how I get myself. And then within 24 hours, it's like, oh, I don't even have that food craving anymore. I ate what was in my fridge and I was fine. Okay. I'm not saying don't eat for 24 hours. I'm saying use what's in the house before you go and buy food. If you have an issue with overspending on a uh, DoorDash and things like that, that's just my opinion. But mainly it's for impulse shopping, impulse spending, things like that. It's a good way to kind of trick yourself into at least thinking about it a little more. There are certain brands that I don't buy anything from unless there's a sale going on because though I like the styles or whatever, I don't think it's worth the exorbitant price point that they're at. Same with this. I don't need the Stanley Cup because I was influenced by Tinks 500 years ago uh, to buy the Simply Modern Cup and I'm in love with that thing still. It stays cold the entire time. I love that thing. I don't need the, the, the Stanley cup just cause it has a handle. That's another tip. Look at who is promoting it to you. Is this person a blonde? Are you a brunette? Are they promoting something that looks really good on them? Let's be realistic about whether or not it'll look really good on you. This is what used to get me all the time when I was on younger and online shopping. I would never think about like, oh, this model looks absolutely nothing like me. That outfit will certainly look the exact same on me. It will not. It's cute. It will not look good on me. And I, I have to accept that about myself. For example, Olaplex, um, I'm fairly certain that's designed for blonde hair, actually. It did fine with my hair, but I dye my hair dark, you know? It's not like my hair is just like overheated or anything like that. I don't, it's not like heat damaged or anything. It's just that it's damaged from box dye over the years. And so Olaplex didn't really hurt it. Um, it helped it a little bit, but nothing drastic. So I moved on from Olaplex. There are some people who are seeing genuine damage to their hair from Olaplex. So again, I think it's just kind of like, look at the products. Not every product is made for every type of hair or skin type, things like that. There are products that are not meant for dry skin. I have dry skin. Obviously it's not gonna look good on me. It doesn't mean that the person promoting it or saying how much they loved it is lying. It just means that I have a different type of skin. There was one TikToker that I saw as well who was like, it's fine if you want the Dyson Airwrap, but be realistic with yourself. Are you in a place where you can comfortably spend $800 on a hairdryer or a curling iron or what have you? And if the answer is no, you do not need it. I don't have the Dyson Airwrap. I have my Revlon and knockoff Revlon air blow dryer. The important thing about the de-influencing trend is that we are in a time of uh, financial uncertainty 
and it's probably only going to get worse. So the important thing is to ask yourself, what are your needs? What are your wants? How can you accommodate them without going broke? You know, essentially, do you need 18 blushes because this one influencer that you really like promoted it? Probably not. Do you have one that works really well that you already have that you like the shade and it's working fine? Finish it till it's done. I think there's something to be said about using products till they're empty. I think there's something to be said about repurchasing products that you know you already like versus just trying something new. Maybe you don't need to have 15, 20 influencers who all talk about products that you like. Maybe you only need three of those that you actually listen to on their products, you know? And that's up to you. It's a personal discretion thing again. I already saw people who were like talking about how brands were reaching out to them, talking about like being split, slipped into the de-influencing, like, oh yeah, so you say you don't like this product, but then you talk about our products, but then all of the products are like their products or something like that. So it's like, again, the de-influencing trend didn't lie to you. There's common sense, there's media literacy, there's being, uh, trying to make better financial decisions for yourself. Spending impulsively is a problem. And it's something that some people just don't even realize they have. And it's okay to start looking towards acknowledging that within yourself and taking steps to make different changes. That does not mean getting rid of everything you had immediately because so-and-so said it wasn't good or that it made their fall out. But then, oh, you've been using it. Your hair is not falling out and you like it enough. Have you seen the de-influencing trend? Were there any products that you were influenced to buy that you are now seeing featured in the de-influencing trend? Did you like any of these products? Do you agree that any of these products are not worth the price or the hype? Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, this Welsh Shannon's podcast. Reminder, I have merch like this mug. And there might be a shirt designed for this video. I don't know yet. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also support me on Patreon, I'll down below. If like to follow me on my social media, we all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Sometimes he's very good when I'm filming and sometimes he just starts screaming at every little noise. Thank you, Andrew, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Chris P, Crash, Bishi, Tana, Journey, Win, Don, Donnie, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Hopeless, Homer, Incognito, Isaiah, Zachary, James, Joe, John, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lise, Luis, Mae West, Madeline, Matt, Matt O, Matthew, Meme Lord, Michael, Mia, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathaniel, Nocturnal, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Ciara, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Heavenly, Plastic, Tenzin, Tom, Thomas, Querty, Randy, Wendy, William, Winter, Will, Zendry, Zwing.